In the background here behind me, we're building the world's first thousand mile an hour car, a Bloodhound supersonic car, a car that's designed to inspire a generation. And we're doing that on the basis of all the experience we learned setting the current world land speed record with Thrust SSC. And that project in turn used all of the experience that Richard Noble gained breaking the land speed record in Thrust 2 30 years ago. We wouldn't be here today without that. Well, it's just a flood of memories. The extraordinary thing is um, I fit exactly as I did last time, so I'm really pleased about that. Um, and particularly the smell. This car has got a special smell about it. Solvents, it's a hydraulic fluid, it's, it's an aeroplane smell, you know, and there's a, bit of, uh, there's a bit of fear in there as well. This is a wonderful car, it's an absolutely wonderful car. Uh, we started the Thrust 2 program in 1979 and uh, we, all we had in the world was 175 pounds. Okay, so that's where we started. Uh, we built the car on the Isle of Wight. The designer was a very clever guy called John Ackroyd. Uh, we couldn't even afford to ha uh, have a telephone. And it was a huge fight. It took four years to get the car built. And, um, and then basically we took it to Bonneville um, in 1981. We got it all wrong. Um, we were trying to run the car with solid wheels on the salt and that didn't work and the car hammered like hell. But what we did get was one 500 mile an hour run. And that was, that was really great. That really was great because then we could show, you know, we really could do it. Uh, but then the desert flooded and we had to go home. And when we got to Bonneville in 1982, it flooded immediately. So it's hopeless. We couldn't even get the car off the trailer. So we searched around and we found this wonderful place called the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. And this had got a different surface. So instead of it actually being the hard, hard salt, we got a, an alkali plier desert, which is more like a sort of dried mud lake. So uh, we got going and we got the car up to 615 miles an hour, which was really good and it was all going well. But then it rained, it was too late and it was the end of the season and everything else. So we then had to go back to England again and we came back finally in 1983 and we pushed it and we pushed it and we pushed it and eventually we got up to our peak speed of 650.88 miles an hour and a new world record of 633. We've done it. And the size of the achievement is amazing. Only six men in history have done more than 600 miles an hour on land. I'm lucky enough to bring the skills of a fighter pilot to Bloodhound SSC. I am used to the idea of traveling at six, seven, eight hundred miles an hour, supersonic travel, jet engines, etc. I've got the background of Thrust SSC behind me as well. He was learning this stuff from a book, and learning this stuff from films of Bonneville in the 1960s. That in itself I still find quite astonishing. And um, so you'd be out about uh, midday, it was fairly hot. And as you start off from the start of the, the run, and between naught and uh, 300 miles an hour, the car's all over the place. It's got these big, big fins at the back, but they don't really work until you get to 300 miles an hour. Then it starts to settle down. And the interesting thing about it is 300 to 550 is boring. It's really boring, it's just more of the same, but faster. And then when you start getting up to 550 and towards 600, something happens and here, just on here, you see the shot wave build up as the airflow locally of the, of the top of the intake here goes supersonic. And on one particular day, the whole car was clouded in a very fierce mist from the, uh, the change in pressure which was causing this in the, the, from, from the shock waves. Um, it's a very interesting experience because your mental processes uh, speed right up. So everything happens in very, very slow motion. At 650 miles an hour, you can see every single detail on that track come up and go under the, the car. You go through the measured mile and then the fun starts because you've got to think about stopping and that. Stopping these cars is not easy. So what we do with thrust two is you come back on the throttle to cancel the afterburner and then we've got to give the engine three seconds to cool, which seems an eternity at these speeds. And then at that point, can you um, shut the, the fuel off the engine, which is you do with your right foot, and with your, with your right finger, you press on the button on the steering wheel, which fires the parachute. Bang! And you've got 6G deceleration. You're losing speed at 130 odd miles an hour per second. The acceleration and the deceleration, it's like the most violent fairground ride you'll ever get on. Long period of acceleration followed by a long period of deceleration. Your inner ear is now lying to you. It's called the somatographic illusion. It upsets your inner ears and it gives you the impression that you're driving vertically straight down into the middle of the earth. 
he admitted afterwards, he said, I thought I was going mad, but I didn't dare tell anybody. What on earth is going wrong with me? And eventually, one of the other drivers out at Bonneville said, yeah, when you put the parachutes out, that always happens. Then you're down to 400 miles an hour. 400 miles an hour is so slow that you want to open the door and get out, you know. <laughs> and then you're down to 200 miles an hour and you bring the wheel brakes in, bring it to a halt. And then what you've got to do is get your notebook out and write everything you can possibly remember. And the next thing is that the, um, the engineering team's alongside in the Jaguar and basically then we're uh, comparing notes and getting around, ready to turn around and get back in. <laughs> How did that feel, Richard? Great, absolutely bloody marvellous. We ought to get it out of the museum and run it. <laughs> well, could you